It occurred to us that people generally cook a prime rib around the holidays when they should be cooking it in the middle of summer on the grill. Today's ridiculously delicious grilled prime rib was sponsored by Beef. It's what's for dinner. I love the idea that you can make one thing that feeds a bunch of people. Like the breakfast casserole biscuit nonsense oh. that we made. Max, the picture, please. I apologize for that noise. <laughs> Not only did that look good, but it tasted great. One thing serves a bunch of people. People love a roast beef. When do they make it? Make it at Christmas. They make it for New Year's Eve. They make it in the fall, that kind of thing. When I think one of the best ways to make it is on the grill like the one behind me. So we're gonna do that. It's so simple, it really is. But to make it better, to jack it, no, no. I had a different thought. No, forget that. I don't know what I was, uh, to, 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 what's the word I always use? To level up, to elevate. Thank you, Chance. Why didn't you think of that? To elevate it, we're going to make a very special butter to go with it. A bone marrow butter. Oh, what? We're using two different parts of the cow that will come together in the most joyous way. And by the way, most people make bone marrow butter and like a compound and they slice it and they put it on. No, we're not doing that. We're gonna be basting the roast as it cooks with it. Ah, oh, it's gonna be fantastic. And then we'll slather some on a slice at the end because that's the real way. Let's start with the bone marrow first. There you go. You got a big sheet pan full of bone marrow bones femur bone from the actual animal. It's the largest bone in the animal, I believe, and it's straight, which makes it easy to deal with. So what they do, they take the bone like this, and then often they cut it this way. This is, I call this canoe shape. Sometimes they keep them like this whole round and cut them like that. I like cooking them this way. I think it's better. And so what we're going for is this gorgeous spongy part in here that when it heats up and cooks, it gets so fatty, so rich, so delicious. This could be butter kind of by itself, but we're gonna make it with a couple other things to get it better. You're gonna cook these right on the grill, indirect. We just have to get them ready first. So this is what we do. Just a little olive oil. Let's keep the richness happening all over the board here, right? You'd be blown away by how simple this is. We're gonna use these eight, but I'll cook one extra one, just for us to taste, just for us to taste. And now salt and pepper. And you don't need a ton. And now we can go to the grill. Indirect, direct. This side is on, this side is not. So we're just gonna take our guys and line them up as best as we can. Oh, these are all gonna fit. They're not all gonna fit, too big. That's okay. We're cooking these like they're in an oven, which means we shut the lid and we let them go. Okay, so how long you uh, wanna know they're gonna take? I'd say anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how hot your grill is. Yeah, that seems about right. I mean, you want it somewhere in the 400 degree range if you can get it there and you have a thing. If not, just get one side super hot and throw them on and watch them when they get sizzly and bubbly. That's what we're looking for. But while we're waiting for that, it's time for this guy, our beautiful prime rib to get set up because it's going on when those guys come off. It's a beautiful piece. This is prime, prime rib. They're not always. and. You may have seen us do this before. I like it with the bones, because eating the bones is great. The butcher that I go to removes the bones and then ties them back on. So what that does is when this is all finished, you now are not dealing with a big four pound hot piece of meat and trying to remove bones. You'll clip these, they'll come right off, be perfectly cooked, ready for you to do whatever you want with. You know, it occurred to me that uh, I'm calling it a prime rib and you might be confused with its quality. It's a prime rib because it comes from the rib section of the cow. The USDA grades beef on eight different uh, levels. The ones we're most familiar with would be prime choice and select. Prime has the most fat marbling and accounts for about 2% of all the beef out there. This one, the one I'm using, happens to be a prime prime rib, but you could have a choice prime rib and it would still be awesome. I just have this because, well, that's the one I wanted. But we're gonna season this to get it on the grill very simply. First, we're gonna use a little mustard. No, wait, I need to ask a question. I'm asking this question to Max. There's mustard and it's gonna get slathered with my hands. Are you okay with a bare hand or would you prefer a glove protected hand? I would have been finer with the hands if you hadn't said slathered. God. 
have to gloves. Just do it. No gloves. No, I'm going with gloves. You just want to do the opposite of what I'm <laughs> No, see how I easy it is. No, if I had said gloves, you would have said no gloves. You know, I'll tell you something. There's something about a glove that I'm not... It makes it less cooking. I'm not using the glove. Who's ready for slathering? Yeah. Goes like, it, gets, it goes like this. We'll get this on the whole thing first. So when you've got this done, we're going to go salt, pepper, and garlic powder. But I, you know I keep my salt and pepper mixed. So let's just add some garlic powder to this and do that to make it a one-step operation. And you can season quite aggressively because it's thick and you want that, even the fat side. My mom used to cook her roast beefs exactly this way. This is the Joy Zion School of Roast Beef Cooking. And she was an amazing cook. And I always say it, because I feel I need to, it's not gonna taste like mustard when you're done. It's just gonna be delicious. It's gonna add a little kick of umami and certainly help all this stuff stick. Just like that, until our bone marrows come off and we can start checking them anytime. And look at it, look, it's been what, 10 minutes, I think? I threw this guy in, 400 degrees, nice. And they're all cooking beautifully. Oh, look it. If you've never had bone marrow and you're not my wife, you're missing out on something. I did forget to point out that if I wasn't serving them like this with butter and herbs and stuff that will go with it, you wanna serve them on their own, you can soak them in salt water overnight and it will get rid of any little bits of blood that you see now coming out and that's fine. It'll kind of make them pure white and they'll present better, but there's no point in doing that when you're going to just take it out and use it. All right, probably 10 more. All right, while we're waiting, let's get ready for our sauce. I feel like MacGyver. I've got chopsticks, I've got string, I've got butter, I've got a little pot. And by little pot, I mean this kind of little pot. Everybody stop it, just stop it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use two sticks of butter because we wanna be basting quite a lot of this and we want some for after. One stick, two stick. We wanna baste and we want some for after. Next, we'll put a few cloves of garlic in. Let's go three. I sure hope my little pot is gonna be big enough. Now I want a little bit of rosemary. So maybe, you know, like a teaspoon or so. Like that, beautiful. And now I need to deal with this. We're gonna make a basting brush out of this, time. I'm gonna cut this tag off, but keep the elastic. And this is gonna help us make our basting brush like this. I think the last time I did this, I said it looks like a little witch's broom, and it certainly does. So this is gonna get dipped in here and then basted on the roast beef. And that's gonna make insane flavor every stroke. It's gonna be great. But what's missing from this is the bone marrow. I think we might be there, let me check. Who's ready for sizzly, bubbly, and gorgeous? Look at them. This is perfect. You could just, oh, it just melts in. Oh, oh. Okay, let's take everybody off. Man, oh man. This is some fine, fine bone marrow right here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, while we're still here, nobody move because it's time for this kid. Put him like this. Now you realize because only this side is on, we're gonna need to turn this guy. It's like every 15, 20 minutes, we're just gonna go a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. I'm gonna guess probably two and a half-ish hours for this guy, four pounds. We'll get a thermometer in him in a little while. But right now we can finish our bone marrow butter. And look at what we've done. I kept one for a little, just a little taste each. One, two, and bon appetit. So the right way to do it is like a little crispy piece of baguette toasted. That, holy smokes. That's gonna richen this up. All right, so let's get it out. So we're just gonna take a bone, just scrape down, put it in the mortar, and away we go. Okay, get rid of my bones, bone marrow canoes. Wipe this beautiful fat off. And now, like I could have done this in a process or something, but I don't want to, I just wanna do this. I just wanna break up the bigger pieces of it as best as I can without spilling it and without getting it on me. I'm starting to worry my little pot's not big enough. It's not big enough, is it? It's going to go over. I mean, maybe when the butter gets down. So let's do this. Let me start this melting. Give me a minute to melt this on the grill, and I'll be back. Here's our butter melted. <laughs> it's not going in. I'm telling you. So maybe what I need to do is put some in, and this hold a little bit back. One good basting should take care of it, right? Wow. Oh, wait. Why am I crying so much? Look at this. By the way, I proposed smoked shrimp enchiladas, and Max doesn't like the idea. Let us know what you think below. No, they don't like the idea. You I'm don't like the idea. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of butter, and eight femurs worth of bone marrow. 
Okay, so let's go look at our roast and uh, let's give it a base to start this party. And here's what we're dealing with. Look at this. It's been about what, 20 minutes, maybe? Something like that? Yeah. Somebody talk to me. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, thank you. And so now we're just going to, I don't have anything else to use. We're gonna turn it this way. Remember I said a quarter turn. And now, using this glove because my hand is reeling from the burn, now we baste with our time brush. And all it's gonna do. Sounds like something from a Bruce Willis movie. A time brush? Yeah. <laughs> all it's gonna Get the do time brush. is just add extra beautiful flavor to this. But I'm not gonna use it all for the basting because I really like the idea of pouring some of this beautiful butter on a big slice of this after. We're good. We'll check it in about another 20 or so. All right, so let's get this guy out. This is cooled down now. I mean, look at that. That is just chock-a-block with bone marrow. Do you know that expression? No. Chock-a-block. I know chock-full. No, I think it's an old expression. I've never used it until now, I don't think, but I think it means chock-full. Chock-a-block, I don't know, it's dumb. But this is not dumb, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. And we've been turning in and watching and making sure everybody's happy and there you go. All right, cook well, little man. We're ready. Watch this. Oh, my heart's melting. Hold on, pardon my back. Okay. Have a look at that. Little Vanna White spin. It's gorgeous. Okay, well we're gonna let it rest, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But as it goes into its resting period, I just wanted one more baste of it. One more. And this time brush, look at how wilted down it is. It has given up so much of its flavor to this guy. Willingly, thank you. Sacrificed himself for our little roast, who will now get a loose coating of foil. And we'll see you when we see you. It's time for the payoff. And that would be uh, eating it. So it's sat for 10 or so. Still nice and warm. Look, it's a four pound piece of meat. It's gonna hold its temp for a while. So don't, don't worry that it's gonna be cold for your guests. Now, do you remember what I said about the bones that were cut off and then tied back on? All we need to do is this. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason you wanna find yourself a good butcher because they do these kinds of things for you and you don't need to even think about it. Pull these guys out. Oh God, I'm so happy. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Ah, that fly. There we go. So now you just take your knife. You finish. I'm working here, do you mind not playing? Oh my God. For God's sakes. <laughs> All right, now let's cut. So just take your guy and make one nice cut right here. Well, the outside for those that like the outside and the inside for those that like the inside. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is about as perfect as you could ask for. It's gorgeous like this because of how we cooked it. Indirect, on the grill. You'd think a gorgeous piece of beef like this would be sensitive. You can actually, you know, get in and deal. That, forget that, I don't know where that line was going. <laughs> so I say we have a bite. So let's just hold on to this kid for now. Quite partial to an inside outside bite because you get some of everything here, right? But look at that. Look at that gorgeous piece. Remember what I said I wanted to do before I have this bite? So I wanted to take a little bit more of the, of the bone marrow butter and put it on there. Should we all have a bite, boys? Max, watch the point. Chancellor, one, two, and... Okay, maybe the best bite of roast beef I've ever had. Maybe the best bite of roast beef I've ever had. Perfect. It's that buttery richness from the bone marrow that just adds. And even though I was basting with the time brush the whole time, it's not overwhelmingly time infused. Oh my. And then don't forget, the bones. Cut the bones and who's ever been the best boy or girl at the table, get some. Listen, here's the point of this. This is so fun and really so hands off. I mean, it was on the grill behind me for 
Uh, I, we think about two and three quarter hours, that's it. Somewhere between two and a half and two and three quarters. And apart from turning it every 20 minutes or so and basting every 20 minutes or so, it's a very simple thing to do. It's elegant, it's crazy delicious. Don't save it just for the fall holidays. Bust it out now, make sandwiches with it, cut slices, just enjoy. That's what we want you to do. So once again, thank you to the NCBA, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. They hope that you enjoy beef as much as they do. And I'm telling you, when it's this, you cannot go wrong. Go out and get some. Right now, we're over, so now you can go.